Afternoon, Dwayne here, Dry Creek Wrangler School. I'm going to start redoing some of my first original videos just because the sound on them, on some of them, was pretty poor. Uh, the uh, picture wasn't as good. And so some of those I'm going to come along and so uh, I'm going to redo them. So if you watch this, you say, I think I saw something like this before. You probably did. I did this video, this subject, over a year ago. And, uh, and the sound wasn't very good on it. So we're gonna, we're gonna try it again. Mom and I decided to come out and go riding today. And it was raining when we left. And we're supposed to, forecast is calling for about three days of rain. And, but the rain has quit now. And so we're gonna stop and make a video. So Mama got down and uh, hobbled Biscuit over there. And uh, folks, that's the value of hobble breaking a horse right there. Um, and it's just so nice to be able to stop and get down, put a set of hobbles on your horse and walk away and not worry about it. So what I, wanna, what I want to uh, do the subject on today is proper posture in riding. Uh, and now, this is how I teach it, this is how I ride and how I teach it. What are you doing, son? Come on. You're going to sleep down there or trying to get a bite of grass. Now, if you are in rodeoing, so Connor came here, and I've been teaching Connor to ride. Or you guys know Connor from on here. He went down here, and he just started an apprenticeship uh, with a team roping trainer south of here. And uh, so the, he went out and worked with him and rode with him. And after a bit, the trainer said, I don't like how you ride. Now, that's not fault. That's not fault, okay? Because... The way you ride in rodeo and team roping or in bow racing is not the same as how you ride out in the open, either trail riding or working cattle on the range or whatever, it's different. So this is not to say that this is the only way there is to ride. This is not to say this is the only correct way. Uh, I'm saying this is how I ride and this is how I've taught a lot of people to ride and this is how I've correct a lot of pain and discomfort in my riders. Nope, get up, okay? All right, so we're going, we're going to just kind of work on that today. Now, the first thing that's important is in your posture is that you have to set up straight. Now, I don't know how much this is going to carry across with this slicker on. You can carry that slicker back. You want to set up straight. Now, I teach it like you take a spring, okay, like you take that cold spring out of a clicker ink pen and uh, take that spring, and as long as that spring is straight up and down, okay, it has support, it has tension, it's doing its job. But if you bend that spring, it collapses on itself, okay? So when you're riding, you need to set up straight. You need to have a straight line from your ear, down through your shoulders, through your sides, your core, it needs to be a straight line. And when you have that straight line, then your body supports itself, all right? So when your horse is moving, your body's supporting itself like it's supposed to. But if you, bend that spring and you ride like this then your body's collapsing on itself and you're going to come back and you're going to be very uncomfortable okay so you need to set up straight now part of setting up straight is if you know the human skeleton human anatomy he's going to sneak down there and get a bite uh you know that the pelvic bones come down Come back up, come down, come back up, okay? Now, one thing you may not know, and I didn't know for the longest time, is a man's pelvic bones are shaped different than a woman's, okay? Uh, a man's pelvic bones kind of come down more, not a point, but more to a point and back up, to a point and back up. And a woman's are kind of more flat across the bottom of those pelvic bones. Now, when you're sitting in your saddle, you need to sit with your pelvis rocked forward so that you can feel those pelvic bones on your saddle. You need to feel them, okay? It don't take much. If you do this right here, you're like, ah, oh, there's some relief. I don't feel those pelvic bones. Well, if you do that, you're not sitting right because you have collapsed here at your waist. You've collapsed down, okay? So you need to set up and you need to have those pins flat on the seat of your saddle, okay? And, uh, so then when you move, when your horse moves, with the movement of your horse, you're setting up straight, 
And as your horse, when your horse's movement is side to side, then you're flexing your hips side to side like this. Come on over here and be still. Cool. You're flexing like this. Now, when you got a really hard moving horse like Boone, and he's got a lot of this movement, or a short coupled horse like Sweet Jane, she's short and she's short back, and they've got a lot of movement like this, and you say, man, that's, that's hard to ride, that's uncomfortable. What you have to do is you have to get yourself to the point where you loosen up, you relax, and you're moving with the movement of the horse, and your shoulders are still, so you're setting up straight, and this U-joint, this universal joint, like on your truck or your car, is doing the flexing. You're not flexing with the horse like this, okay? This is doing all the flexing right here. The horse goes downhill, this foot comes forward, so this hip drops. And then as this foot comes forward, this hip drops, okay? And it's like this. Well, you're sitting here and you're absorbing it like this, but your hat stays still and you stay straight. When you come back from riding, if everything is right, the only thing that should hurt if you're out of shape is your butt and your core, okay? If your knees hurt, if your ankles hurt, if your shoulders hurt, if your neck hurts, if your back hurts, your lower back hurts, then things are not right. That's how you know whether you have found that proper spot or not. And that's why guys and gals can go out and ride 20 miles, 25 miles, that's the difference between the ones who come back and are not hurting and the ones who come back and are crippled for three days, okay? One of those uh, factors <coughs> is having a, having a saddle that fits you, having a good quality saddle and it fits you. Your stirrups are right. Um, now, they say that you want to be able to stand up in your stirrups and have about three fingers between you and the seat. That is a general rule of thumb. You need to be able to stand up and have some room between you. If you keep losing your stirrup, if your foot keeps coming out of your stirrup, then your stirrups are too long, okay? If your knees and ankles hurt, then probably your stirrups are too short uh, or your stirrups are not turned properly and your ankles is trying to keep them forced out and they're trying to come back in. So there's a lot of factors, all right? A lot of factors, whoa, son. When you're going downhill, when you're going downhill, you want to get your feet out in front of you and lean back, all right? If you look at any of these hills, so look at these trees over here on this hill, okay? It does not matter on what part of the hill how steep that hill is. Regardless of how steep that hill is, that tree grows straight up. That's you on your horse. Your horse is going downhill. Your horse is the hill. You adjust so that you're still pointing straight up. Your horse is going uphill. You lean forward and adjust so that you're still pointing straight up, straight up to the center of the universe, okay? And you stay balanced. You don't lean, all right? You don't lean to the side. You just stay up. How much pressure to have in the stirrups? Get up. How much pressure in the stirrups? Just rest your feet in the stirrups, okay? If your knees and ankles are hurting, it's a really good chance that you're pushing down and you're carrying your weight in the stirrups. Set up forked on your horse. All right. I like to say you got a slice of individually wrapped Kraft American cheese, one slice in each hip pocket. Go on your ride and come back and give me back my cheese. You don't sit on your hip pockets. If you sit on your hip pockets, you're sitting like a sack of potatoes or a bag of flour on top of the saddle. And your horse squirts one way or the other because it spooks, because it jumps, because of whatever. You're a lot more likely to come rolling out of the saddle. But if you set up, and so you're riding your horse on your pins and on your thighs, then you're forking your horse, and you're a part of your horse. You're not just sitting on your horse. So whichever way your horse goes, you go, okay? So those are some things that, uh, that help, that tend to help a lot of folks, and hopefully uh, it'll help you. I know I didn't cover everything, and uh, if you got some questions, just put them in the comments and uh, that I need to go into a little bit more. Uh, I get the chance, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do one on sitting the trot. I get that a lot. How in the world do you sit in the trot? Because I am, those who come through here, those that know me, I am rapidly anti-posting. Now don't pick a fight with me, all right? If you ride English, you ride an arena or whatever, get your head up and quit now, come on. There you go. And you post, okay.
I, I'm not going to pick a fight with you and you don't pick a fight with me. But if you're out here, out in the open and you're posting, that's dangerous. All right? Because as you're coming up, if you know what posting is, you know what I'm talking about. So you're trotting as you come up, if your horse jumps sideways, because a deer boils up out of the brush or a rabbit or something and he explodes off to the left and you're already up, you're going to come out of the saddle. Okay? Your saddle is in contact with your horse, and you are in contact with your saddle. That's your security. That's how it is. That's how it's supposed to work. Stay in contact with your saddle. Stay proper position, proper posture. Stay forked, set up, and become a part of the horse. Don't become a 200-pound sack of potatoes that's a passenger on your horse. Okay? You want to become a part of the horse and you want to do all that you can to make it easier for the horse, all right? You want to be able to move with the horse. I don't let my horses graze, and he's kind of like, Dwayne, I'd really like to get a bite of that. Let's move him off of that so he's not tempted, okay? All right, anyhow, that's pretty well it, and I hope it helps. If you like, click like. Click share and send it to somebody. If you think you got somebody, this might help. And if you have any questions or suggestions, go ahead and put them in the comments. Uh, if you're going to get on there and say, Dwayne, you're totally wrong, then go someplace else. I'm not interested, okay? Um, and uh, I do what I do. I've been doing it for 30 years, and I'm still learning, and there's always somebody says, no, you can't do that. I had a guy kick me completely off his ranch one time because I refused to ride like he rode, and uh, I don't have any patience for that. In fact, I don't have a whole lot of patience anymore for a lot of stuff, seems like. i got to mellow out. Uh, but you guys have a good one, all right? And I appreciate it. We'll catch you next time.